Join us on the uh, program right now, Frank Borelli, the editor-in-chief of Officer.com. Frank, good evening to you, sir. Good evening, Cam. Thanks for having me back. Hey, it's great to have you back on the program, and uh, and, and a great column uh, that, that you've written on Officer.com, and I know that you were hoping for a, a good reaction to this. Uh, does gun control benefit law enforcement is the question that you asked. Now, before we, we get into uh, what you have decided, uh, I have to say, I, I think you did a, a, a really good job of explaining your position, why you feel the way you do, and then asking uh, your readers at Officer.com what they thought. So where do you come down on the question, does gun control benefit law enforcement? Uh, I, I'm under the opinion that it doesn't really. Um, I, I'm not one of those people who thinks that everybody should have a 50 caliber machine gun mounted on their van. Uh, but if you're a law-abiding citizen... Well, that plays hell with the gas mileage anyway. Frank, I'm telling right? you. and it, Yeah, it sucks on the windscreen. <laughs> but if you're a law-abiding citizen, why should it bother me as a police officer that you have a firearm? Why shouldn't I be happy? Because that's one more person that can help me out if I get my rear end in a sling and, and need assistance. Um, I, I don't see where gun control has ever been proven to, uh, to disarm criminals. And so... You know, I've been pro-Second Amendment all my life. I'd rather have the legal armed citizen out there without having any restrictions, you know, rather than not having that potential backup available. Yeah. And so what has the response been at Officer.com? Have a lot of people been commenting? Well, we've gotten 83 comments so far. I was sitting here looking at it and looking through some of these comments, and um, it's amazing the number of people that have responded that are police officers and say, I agree with you. Uh, that they agree with my opinion. One guy has said, you know, the only people in favor of gun control are the administrators and chiefs that are playing a political game. Uh, we did have one Canadian Mountie who said they, they have bigger problems with the border control than they do uh, with guns because of their gun laws, and he loves the fact that guns are so restricted there. Uh, if we're going to have uh, – he says, if you think that criminals get it anyway, so you just make it legal for everyone – if you think that's a good argument, then you should legalize drugs or you should legalize marijuana. All right. I have a hard time comparing the two, but <laughs> um, by and large, we've, we've really had a positive response. I've had citizens saying, hey, I'm glad to see law enforcement officers expressing this attitude. So it's, it's, it's been a very uh, positive response. This is, you know, I, I don't write a lot of columns on officer.com that have to do with gun control mm-hmm. or the Second Amendment, but when I do, they are always the most heavily commented on. Well, and, it, it, you know, it's not surprising because. I mean, let's be honest, Frank. The, the rank and file officers and, and and even chiefs as well have a tendency to get pulled into this debate by anti-gun politicians. I mean, we just saw in Tennessee Governor Phil Bredesen last week veto a uh, a bill uh, regarding uh, uh, restaurant carry, right. and when he vetoed this bill, uh, he had with him I think like fifty law enforcement officers, including the chief of police of Nashville, uh, and he and he basically used these guys as a backdrop to veto this bill and say. Law enforcement does not support this bill. Well, now, of course, we're hearing from Tennessee lawmen all over the place saying, actually, yeah, I support this bill. Oh, I do, too. Uh, But these chiefs and these officers were, in essence, told, go stand behind the governor as he makes this veto. I I happen to think that's pretty unfair for these officers. Uh, I I agree with you. But didn't Tennessee also, uh, didn't their (laughs) legislature just pass a bill um, saying it's doing the same thing Montana did. If there's a gun made in Tennessee, uh, not for export, not for sale outside the state, blah, 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 that the federal gun laws don't apply to it. From what I understand, they did. And the legislature also overrode Governor Bredesen's uh, veto of restaurant carry. So, uh, don't you yeah. just hate when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> but do officers feel, you know, uh, uh, I mean, do they feel like they're they're being played as or used as pawns sometimes in this uh, in the gun control uh, game? I think sometimes they do. I think sometimes they don't even know what's going on. Um, you know, when, when you're a, a, a police officer, or a police officer first class, corporal, whatever, and some captain says, "Go stand over there and look pretty," you say, "Yes, sir." Um, you know, you go stand over there and you do your best you can and look pretty. Thankfully, that never happened to me because you can't polish a turd. So. I didn't have that problem. But um, yeah, I don't think they appreciate being used. I think the large majority of officers, uh, in my experience, are in favor of the Second Amendment and the citizens' right to keep and bear arms and concealed carry permits. Yes, there are officer survival concerns that are related to it. 
that's one of the things I addressed. You know, those first few moments of contact with a citizen in any situation where you don't know if they're a good guy or a bad guy, you have to you have to perform as if they're a bad guy until you can confirm otherwise because you don't want to put yourself at risk. Um, but once you know they're not a bad guy, you know, who cares? If they're a good guy, they're a good guy. What do I care if they've got a knife in their pocket or a gun on their hip? They're a good guy. Now we're just dealing with whatever it was that brought us into contact, and, and you know, you handle it professionally and courteously, and you keep on going. Yeah. Well, you know, and, 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 and I, I, I hope uh, that one of the things that, that comes about from, from your article, and I hope that there is more talk about this, uh, is that, that, you know, not only gun owners, but, but frankly non-gun owners around the country start to understand uh, that really the vast majority of the rank-and-file officers really do support the Second Amendment. I mean, you get the attitude uh, from watching, like, Washington, D.C. TV, and you're in, the, uh, you're in the Baltimore television market, aren't you, Frank? Actually, I'm south of D.C., so it's closer to that. Oh, okay, so you get, uh, you get the D.C. market, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, you get the attitude uh, and the impression from the local media that every officer in Washington, D.C., uh, uh, you know, supported D.C.'s gun ban, uh, does not believe in the right to keep their arms, all because of the chief... When we've talked to the head of the local police officers union in Washington D.C., and he says, "Look, we support the Second Amendment. We, you know, we we didn't support the uh, the gun ban. We don't think there's a problem with the gun ban going away. Frankly, we want the city council to get tough on the criminals and quit, you know, uh, uh, paying so much attention to the people who aren't breaking the law." It's kind of funny. I'm, I'm a member of the FOP in Maryland, and uh, when Heller versus D.C. was was going being debated. And, uh, you know, they were reaching out to everybody and anybody they could to try to get, uh, you know, some kind of the friend of the court brief or whatever it is against uh, Heller. The request was made to the Maryland FOP, and, and uh, as was related to us, the Maryland FOP position was we support the Second Amendment. We take an oath to, you know, uphold the Constitution, and, you know, the Supreme Court ultimately will decide whether this is constitutional or not constitutional, but we are, are in favor of the Second Amendment. End of story. Yeah. Every cop you talk to out there is going to say, oh, I'm absolutely in favor of the Second Amendment, and then they'll get into their own uh, you know, debates about what they feel are reasonable restrictions and so on, and everybody has their own opinion, and thank God that's what makes America what it is. <laughs> well, Frank, as always, it is a real pleasure uh, having you on the program. We've got uh, your story linked on our news ticker. Uh, I believe that uh, Cameron Gray, uh, Gray has just Twittered it. And, oh, cool. uh, Thank you guys. Yeah, absolutely, because uh, I, I want to see more comments on that, and I hope that uh, we can have you back on in the very near future. Just let me know when, Cam. Thanks very much. All right. Thanks, Frank. Have a good weekend. You too. Frank Borelli, the uh, editor of Officer.com.